You know, it's interesting, each year I get questions of how do you stay warm in the deer stand? And you can tell a lot of people there's a lot of hunters that stop hunting mid-November, late November, and you can tell if they give some tips online or something that they're a little bit off on how to stay warm or they, it hasn't been survival to them, let's put it that way. There's been many times I've sat in the stand, in a tree stand, ex fully exposed with, with uh, the elements and good wind, especially north, northwest winds when it's super cold, and it's been in the teens, 10 degree, 20 degree, and you're literally sitting from dark to dark. Until someone does that, they don't know what it's like to truly be able to stay warm in the deer stand. And let alone, there's been times where, I remember a time in the UP that I sat and it was roughly minus 10, minus five, zero, windy, sat for an afternoon. There was one morning I went out where temperatures are probably minus 25. When I came back in at about 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, after walking back to the house, it was minus five. That's what it warmed up to. Those are the times where even when you have great gear, if your knees are bent while you're sitting, you'll find that your knees get cold. Your elbows, when they're bent, your elbows get cold because it's compressing that fabric and getting cold. That's when you know you've sat in really cold weather. And then there's others, of course, that hunt in Arctic weather. And we're not talking about this. We're talking about traditional whitetail sitting out in a tree stand. And uh, I know some of you out there know what it's like to try to survive and try to stay warm. I'm going to go through some really important tips. And the first one is a hand warmer tube. This to me has been critical. I've shared this story many times, but going back to the early days when I was a teenager, I wanted one of these from Dunham's Sporting Goods in Waterford, Michigan back in 1986, and I just couldn't afford to buy one. Um, didn't have much money back then. I think I was a sophomore or freshman in high school. And I, had, I saw one of these fancy hand warmers at that, and I couldn't buy it. And parents didn't want to buy it for them, didn't have the money at that time. So what they did have was some leftover fabric of wool. And my mom wrapped the wool around, fastened it up here, gave me a big pin that I could put on my clothing. And as that was my first hand warmer too, probably until my, my late teens, I used it for a few years. Exact same concept of this fancy first light one right here. I wear very thin gloves. I wear thin fingerless gloves and I keep my gloves in here and I keep two hand warmers in there. When you're like that, keep your hands incredibly warm. Also, with a zipper like this, I keep gel packs in, which we'll talk about in a second. I keep extra muzzle loader rounds. I keep cough drops. I keep my range finder in there. So this doubles as a little bit of my backpack because I usually don't bring a backpack out in the woods. This is it, and pockets. So that's what I use that hand warmer tube for. It's been critical for me. I'm not putting my hands in pockets. I want them both together. My release is usually hanging off to the side when I have my, my hands in there, and I stay very, very warm in very cold weather. The only time you might get a little cold is you take your hands out, to, you have a big buck coming, deer you want to shoot, and you take your hands out for a while, and you're sitting there holding your bow, it's around for two minutes. I've had times where just even in a minute or two, your hands get cold because it's so frigid out. But then it gives me full movement of my fingers, good contact with my release or gun, and, uh, and keeps them very warm up until that point of shooting. And then let's face it, when you shoot something and it's on the ground and your fingers are cold, you don't really care at that point. But you can always stick them back in your hands, warm them up, which is probably a smart thing to do before you climb out of your tree anyways. So very critical. Hood, hat, and mask. And what's interesting in this is, talk about hood, you know, a lot of our, a lot of our first light clothing has a hood uh, built in or removable. And the faces are cut out on the sides. And I like this because you'll go out and you have the best of planning. You have it. This is a very thick fleece lined, heavy pile fleece lined face mask. A lot of times I'll put my hat on actually, and I'll put this over it. So I still have a really strong brim sticking out. And you'll find this to be very warm, especially when you can zip up a couple inches under your chin. That face mask is zipped in. You have the hat on here, and then when it gets really cold, then you just pull that hood up over. And you can even leave the hood loose. The bottom line is adds a huge extra. And let's face it, when it gets into the late season and you're hunting, you have to sacrifice some hearing and some moving to actually endure. Um, you, you're gonna have extra layers on, you're gonna have extra layers on your head. And that means you're gonna have a hard time listening as, as much. 
but it helps you become a better hunter because you use your ears, you quiet down, don't move much, and listen. You'll hear those deer, a lot of times it's crunchy when it's cold, crunchy leaves, crunchy snow, you can hear them coming. So that kind of offsets any last loss of uh, hearing in there. Very important, I like having a brimmed hat every time I go, I've been burned with that before. I've actually taken a stocking cap and sometimes I'll put a stocking cap over there. It's like gun season when you need orange. That orange is going over the top of this face mask right here. So I can have that orange over this and it's an extra layer of cushioning. But bottom line is I've taken that hat, rolled it up in the front here as best I could to give myself a visor because I'm facing east in the morning. Pretty bad when you forget your visor for that. Boots and feet. Now I like using, I use the warmest lacrosse boots there are. And that's pretty good for me down into the mid 20s right around there. But I'm diabetic, so I don't have good circulation and my feet get cold. Now we've used heat gear socks. I like those, the heat gear socks, that's a upper level. It really helps you stay warmer through 10, 15 degrees more at least. I've used the full, the Volt uh, heat, heated vest too. And that's really nice too. You put it as close to your skin as possible, maybe a t-shirt underneath, that's about it. Control it, remote control in your pocket or through your phone now on, your, on an app. Those are some extra ways to cheat the weather and they have all kinds of heated vests out there. But when it comes to actually keeping your boots and feet warm, I'll take those boots, maybe even some heated socks. One thing that can even counteract those heated socks is I'll take these giant thermoshields. And these are pretty cool Arctic Shield booties that fit over even the biggest pair of boots. Make sure you get these. These are I'm a size 10, and these are the 2XL. It says for 14, 15, but I can tell you right now, these will fit like 10, 11, maybe 12, but make sure you go a couple sizes up when you buy these. What's really cool about these, you get them open and on your toe, and then you take a heat pack like this, you put it, slide it down right on top of your boot, and then you zip this up, you can pull the lanyard, you get it tight right around your boot, and it traps that warm air in right around your toes. Really cool, it's a great way to set up. And, and yes, when I do bring these, I bring a little backpack, bring it, bring it into the woods. And uh, that's a really upper level way to keep your, your, your feet warm, your hands are warm, your head's warm. And that's a lot of the battle right there. Those heat packs are critical. Over the years I've used, even going back to, I remember if there's a red velvet pouch and it was a metal thing, you poured kerosene or something in it, fuel. And uh, it would, it would stay warm, but it would dump out. It was messy, it stunk. It's a pretty cool Christmas gift I got a long time ago and I actually used it. But this right here, the large warmer heat factory. We've used grabber, we've used different kinds and heat factory by far. When you take these out in the morning, these large, the large packs here, I use two, put in my hand warmer tube. And if, when I go out the following morning, you have to remember to put new ones in because they'll still be warm and they might last for an hour in the morning, but at some point they're gonna die out and on a cold morning, you don't want that to happen. So I'm, we buy these by the case. We literally, Dylan brought a box out to just throw me one of these for an illustration. And I think we have 96 we bought last time because not only do I use them during the hunting season and we share them with anyone that's here, we wanna make sure their hands are warm, but then we also, I use them in during, into my client season too, uh, to have a heat pack in your pocket and I bring the, uh, hand warmer tube as well. One thing that is really critical, all of our first light gear, the solitude and sanctuary, those warmer mid level to, to really warm bibs and jackets are windproof. And that's something you could have the warmest material, but if the wind is eight, 10, 12 miles an hour and it's 12 degrees and you're sitting in a tree stand somewhere, you're gonna get cold, that wind's gonna cut through you even in a moderate wind like that, let alone if it's 18, 20 miles an hour and dying down, you might think, well, it's gonna die down an hour or two before dark, but you have to survive to that point to get there. And so windproof is critical. So I was so happy when First Light finally has put wind gear, or windproofing gear into all their top level clothing uh, that, that covers all of hunting season. Bibs and layers. I love bibs. I don't know if I have any right here, I think I do. Um, but bibs are critical to me. These are the sanctuary bibs. And I love these bibs. Another zipper for carrying some stuff in. But the thing about bibs, I tend to buy the next size larger. I'm not advising you do what you want, but I'm, you can cinch these up pretty tight. And what that gives me, it gives me a little bit more room in the legs 
if I want to uh, wear, say, some wool pants underneath, I want to wear some sweatpants and some long johns. But I can do that. I can layer up on my legs more. You have more room. But then at the same time, keeping your core roll uh, mid area is critical. So when you have these bibs and they're going all the way up here, an incredible layer of warmth. Then when you wear a really nice coat over the top, then you have two layers of heavy insulation right across your midsection. And you can see how far this comes up in the back too. So it really keeps your core area warm and that is critical. That's why I like bibs. Pants, there's always gonna be some kind of airflow down here. And then coveralls, most people don't wear coveralls and then a coat over that. So great jacket, get some bib overalls. It really, really helps. And then your layers. A lot of times I'm using a quarter zip, the heavy merino wool and I'm using that quarter zip. I'm using something light, like I'm wearing merino wool, wool right now, it's a t-shirt under this. I like that because of wicks moisture, so when I'm walking in, I get a little bit sweaty with all this clothes on, that moisture is away from my body right away, and it's going into another merino wool layer that takes moisture away to the outside. So then when you sit, you might be sweaty going in by two or three hours later, your, clothes, your inner clothing is dry. So I like those layers. Sometimes if I don't have a hood on the jacket, I'll bring up uh, my own hoodie like this, put that over. A lot of times I'd put on um, middle of the season, I'd put on a mid-weight face mask, which is a little bit lighter, put that over my hat, and then I pull up the hood over that, and then I'll carry a stocking cap, put it over that. So I have two layers against my face, one layer right around here, my cheeks, my nose, I can open that up if I want to talk or breathe or whatever. And then I put a stocking cap over my brim hat like this. And, uh, and that keeps me, keeps the sun out of my eyes, but then at the same time keeps my whole head warm from mid-season and then something heavier like this tundra face mask right here which is a whole lot warmer you can really play it out between between those so those layers are critical something moisture wicking back in the day it was polypropylene cabela's had a thermax long john that i got in the early 90s that was my first exposure i think my buddy mike pratt introduced me to that that was my first exposure to mid or to moisture wicking uh, clothing and base layers and now boy first light has incredible base layers that's one of the things they're known for and bottom line that brings me to quality gear so critical to have quality gear a lot of people say well I'm not spending three hundred dollars or four hundred dollars on a coat think about it you're spending three four hundred dollars on a coat that'll last a lifetime if you buy good quality clothing it lasts a lifetime and you're buying it because you stay warm you buy it because the tapers are, or the sleeves are tapered, so you can actually bow hunt. They're not bulky. They're articulated, meaning the elbows and knees are already bent in. What that means is you're not bending them and putting more pressure points on your elbows and knees to stretch the fabric and make you cold. There's still some room and some give in there. Quality gear is very critical. I love great camo. I believe in the first light camo, but warm clothing is a must in hunting clothes that are built for hunters is very critical because a lot of this stuff is not built by hunters they're basically throwaway garments with poor zippers poor snaps even on our first light gear it's all magnetized or a lot of the stuff they're coming out with is magnetized i really like that kind of stuff for clothing and putting stuff together and don't forget to i want to make sure that you guys all know and i have this other videos this week but for black friday this entire week look in the link check out the link in the description 40 percent off the Sanctuary, Solitude Gear, bibs, jackets, 30% off the Catalyst Gear, which is lightweight, and then a lot of the base layers are 20% off. Huge sale, their biggest sale of the year. Check out the link in the description. Just click on that, go right to it. And uh, I wanna make sure that you guys didn't miss out on that. It's a very important sale. And, uh, and I don't bring those to you often, but when it's a good deal, it's a thank you, my way of thanking you guys and making sure you don't miss out if you're looking for some new gear, especially in time for when the weather gets really, really cold.